I'm sure that at least one time you have used a Google service such as Gmail, Google Maps or Google Plus. Yeah, maybe not that one. If yes, then you have already experience with material design whether you know it or not. Material design is a design system developed by Google and includes guidelines for typography, shapes, shadows, colors, spacing, icons, up to complete components for everything you usually need in a website or web application. The React library for this is called MUI or Material UI. It's really popular with over 2,500 contributors and 83,000 stars on GitHub. And the main contributor from the MUI team apparently never sleeps, that's how you know it's good. Overall, it's really great if you need a complete solution to bootstrap your React project and focus on the business logic without having to reinvent the wheel for everything. We have already enough wheels in front end. So now that you know what Material UI is about, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to get started within the next 10 minutes. So let's dive into it. First, open your React project and run the following command. This will install MUI and Emotion, which is a library to style components and is used under the hood. Once it's finished installing, you can start using it. When creating a website, one of the first things you usually do is create some sort of wrapper div that centers all the content and creates some margins on the sides. Instead of figuring out the perfect wrapper CSS, in Material UI you can simply add the container component. When importing, make sure to choose Material, not System. I can't tell you how often I got this wrong when I started using MUI. Now let's put in some text and check out where the text appears. It's right here. As you can see, the container is a handy out-of-the-box component that you can use to create the basic structure of the page. Let's add a background to the container so we can see its size better. To do that, we can just use the SX prop that is available on every MUI component. And here we can give it a background color of let's say tomato. And let's set the height to 100 visual height. Don't worry about the SX prop for now. We'll come back to it later. For now, let's check out the container again. Now that we can see the size of the container component clearly, let's try to resize the window. As you can see, it's responsive by default. How cool is that? Now let's also change the text from just raw text to a typography component. This one should be used as the default for text. It has a default font and default sizes built in that are based on material design's guidelines. By default, it's a paragraph element, but if you want it to be a, let's say, h1 element, then all you need to do is use the variant prop like this. The next commonly used component is a box. By default, it's literally just an empty div, but you can use the SX prop to apply styles. Now you might ask, if that's the only point of using the box component, why would you choose it over the regular div? Is the SX prop that useful? Let's take a closer look. The SX prop is kinda like a supercharged version of the style attribute that you can use in JSX. If you like writing styles inline, because for example you are working with reusable components or you want to build something quickly, then the SX prop is perfect and can be a good alternative for, for example, Tailwind. You can use really handy shorthands such as P for padding, M for margin, PY for padding top and bottom, or PX for padding left and right. You get the idea. And the often used background color is abbreviated to BG color, as you saw before. This alone already saves a lot of time. Also, MUI has built in spacing of 8 pixel units that you can use with the SX prop, which is good to create consistent spacing throughout your website. You can use it by providing just a number as a value without writing pixel. Let's set the padding to 1. See? Just like that we created a spacing of 8 pixels. If we set it to 2, we get 16. But personally, what I find the most useful feature of the SX prop is being able to apply hover styling and any other styling that is usually not possible with a default style attribute in JSX. Let's say we have a button and want to change its color on hover to dark blue. There would be no way to do that with a normal style attribute. But with the SX prop, we can just write it like this. And it works. Of course, the same goes for pseudo elements and so on. No matter what you build, you will want to make it responsive and apply different styles depending on the screen size. With the SX prop, you can easily do that. Instead of directly providing the value, you can give it an object with values for each breakpoint, just like that. 
And on top of this, this comes with good performance, because unlike the style attribute in JSX that is expensive, MUI converts the values provided in the SX prop to a normal CSS class under the hood using emotion. Now that we have all the basics, let's build something. But before we start, let's create a theme. As you saw, MUI has a lot of default values, but of course you can customize all of them by creating your own theme. Let's do that. First, go into your root file, where all your JavaScript code starts. There will be likely something like the index.js file. Here, let's import the theme provider from MUI material. Make sure to choose the right one again. Now, wrap your code with it. Next, we need to provide a theme object. Let's create one with create theme. Here, we can now provide values for typography, colors, spacing, breakpoints, and more. And by doing that, we override the default theme. Let's keep it simple and just change a few header styles, and let's also change the primary and secondary color. Now we're ready to use the theme. Alright, let's get started and create a service page with a few cards. First, let's add a container for our page. Now let's add the page title using a typography component and set the variant to h1. Notice how it now uses the values that we set in the theme. Next, let's give it a top and bottom margin, center it and change the color to the primary color. Don't forget to use the main property. Let's also add a second header using the h2 tag. Now let's create a few cards. We don't want to write the styles for each single card, so let's create an array of services and map it. After we have the array, let's now use the map method and create a card for each service. We could use the box component here, but there is a nice alternative for these type of cards, called paper. It has an elevation prop that you can set to a value between 0 and 24, which changes the drop shadow and is based on material design guidelines. Let's set it to 3. Let's now put in the service name using the typography component and set the variant to h3 that we prepared in the theme. Now let's put in some text. Ideally, this would be part of the array, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna use lorem ipsum. So let's see how it looks. Okay, let's change a couple of things. First off, let's put all of this in a box and use flexbox and set flex direction to row. Okay, this looks a little bit better. Now some more spacing between the cards and the header. And let's also add some margin inside the cards. And let's also add some margin between the text and the card title. Looks way better now, doesn't it? A good card usually also has a CTA, like a button, so let's add one. Of course, MUI comes with an out-of-the-box button component. By default, the button looks like this, but you can also change its appearance to outlined or contained. Mm, let's use contained. Let's also move it down a little bit. By the way, did you notice that it automatically uses our primary theme color? Cool, right? But we can also change it to our secondary color with a color prop. Color of the text is automatically set to white to create good contrast. If the button color is brighter, then it will automatically choose black for the text. But if you don't like that, you can of course customize that in the theme. Anyway, our cards start looking good, but that's only for this screen size. As you can see, it's not responsive yet. Remember how we set different stylings for each breakpoint at the beginning of the video? Let's apply that now. First of all, let's change the flex direction to be column on mobile. Let's replace row with an object and start from mobile. On XS, which is the smallest size, it should be column. The next breakpoint is small, which is 600 pixel. Yeah, that's a little bit too narrow. Maybe let's use the next breakpoint, medium, which is 900 pixel. This looks way better now. Now let's give the cards the fixed width of 320 pixel. But because we want to have them 100% on mobile, let's do that by using the shorthand and just put in a 1. I think this looks really good now. Of course, there are tons of more complex components that you can use out of the box and a lot of customization options in MUI. Check out the documentation for that. It's really comprehensive and well structured and contains a lot of examples. It also supports TypeScript and all examples are available in TypeScript as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you have now a good understanding of Material UI and you can start your own project. Have fun and see you in the next one.